So Levine Leichman is not a middle market buyout firm. We have a niche strategy for partnering with management teams or uh, who are incentivized to retain as much equity as possible in their businesses uh, and to invest with them to maximize value um, through the exit of our investment. Um, the, I think the economic environment is very fragile right now. I think the uh, economy is, is soft. So we look particularly for companies that have been able to grow through the recession. So if they've taken a hit during the recession, we are very cautious about making any kind of investment because you know, that might speak to uh, their ability to, to withstand another recession. So, so that would, would affect our investing decisions. Decide when to exit a company is, I'm sure very, uh, probably each firm is different. We are targeting a minimum of a 2x uh, net cash multiple to our investors. So we're going to look at the cash flows that the company's uh, throwing off, and we are going to evaluate, you know, when we're going to hit that target and and take that into account in in the exit process. So we have had four uh, exits in the last 12 months. Um, our average hold is about three and a half years, but the exit market, the sale market, has been really frothy. There's so much capital in PE and interest rates are so low, so we've taken advantage of that. And where we are able to, uh, you know, hit or exceed our targets, we have uh, occasionally decided that it's time to exit a bit earlier than we, than we might have. And we've done, it's been a very, a very good outcome for us in this. But I think for us, we, we look at the, um, what we th have projected our outcome to be and when we are either there through the exit or in advance of our plans or if things are more challenging you may have to hold the company longer until you can um, uh, hit your, your cash multiple. We're much more concerned with the multiple of cash than the IRR. So we have been investing in the lower end of the US middle markets and I would say that that you know our sweet spots probably in our growth investment product, 50 to 150 million in revenue size. And one of the key tenets of our investing strategy is that the management team or founder has to want to retain or increase their equity stake in the business post the closing of our investment. I think my experience in the, the middle markets is that it's really these entrepreneurs who are driving the growth engine of the company. They understand their products, they understand their markets, they understand their customers, they have the ideas. We understand the capital structure, the balance sheet. We're very value add in terms of, uh, you know, we can be in terms of operations, but we will not, we don't like to interfere with what the, the entrepreneur, the growth strategy of the entrepreneur. And I think when I meet these entrepreneurs, I really listen to them to convey to them that what they have to say to me is much more important than what I'm going to be bringing to them because while I think that I'm and our firm is very talented in what we do, oftentimes, of course, the other side is looking at us as a commodity, as a fungible commodity in terms of capital. So I think the partnership relationship is formed out of a mutual respect for the um, ability that that entrepreneur is bringing. And when we exit and the founders and entrepreneurs have done well, that's a great chip for us in the marketplace when we're going out to, you know, potentially new investments and saying, talk to our CEOs that we've worked with in the past and see if we've done what we've really said we're going to do. All of our companies that we're investing in are looking for capital, uh, whether they're thinking of selling, whether they're looking to buy out a competitor. Uh, oftentimes, it's a passive shareholder or retired founder who wants to exit. We don't go out and call on companies and say, we have capital to provide. And, um, you know, provided you have a talented entrepreneur, and uh, I think, and you, you make the right decisions, they, are, they all work out the same. It doesn't matter what the reason for the capital is. We don't invest with, as I said, if a if a founder who's been operating the company is leaving and taking their capital off the table, we will not make the investment. That would not be a strategy that would work for us. Fundraising goes fastest when you have a good track record and good returns to show your investors or potential investors. 
and you've been cooperative with them uh, and they're happy with your performance. Then it goes very fast. They speak very well of you to people calling for references and they want to give you more capital. Uh, the other thing that I think is important is if your strategy fits kind of where the economy is at the moment or you can, we have such a niche, we, we don't fall into buyout, we don't fall into debt, all of our companies are paying a current cash return to us, a substantial portion of our investment is in the debt. So we have to kind of fit into LPs that are looking for current cash flow. We, we're, we're also telling them that we're going to deliver them the the multiples and, and the IRRs that they want and, and they have a niche. So if you if you are a niche product and you can find that LP and match up, those things will make it go faster. Other than that, I was listening to a very well-known woman speak the other day, a politician, and she said that the best thing she ever heard was to have skin like a rhinoceros. Take everything seriously and nothing personally. And it goes a lot better. <laughs>